Hey guys, today we're checking out the HP T610 Plus Thin Client and there are lots of things you can do with this but we will focus on turning this into a cute little Windows XP retro gaming PC that's power efficient, quiet and has some upgrade options for all sorts of other projects. We are working with Richard, he runs an eBay store from the US, he is supplying various Thin Clients to check out on our channel and if you're interested in such a machine do check the links down below in the video description for prices and more details. A quick overview of the unit, we've got an AMD dual core processor running at 1.65 GHz, 4 GB RAM, 16 GB of storage, there's an integrated HD 6320 Radeon graphics with up to 1 GB of shared memory and we also get a PCI Express expansion slot. At the front of the machine we have two USB 2.0 ports, headphone and microphone jacks, there's a hard drive activity LED, the power button and there's also a power LED behind the button. Here we have the back of the unit, remember this is the T16 Plus which has the expansion slot as well as an additional serial and parallel port. We have DVI, DisplayPort, Gigabit LAN, two USB 2.0, two USB 3.0, there's another serial port here, two PS2 ports, here goes the power supply and here you can attach a Kensington lock. Here we have a look at the power supply which is included, it's rated at 19 volts and 4.74 amps. For those of you outside from the US, it comes with one of these standard connectors, so you can just pick up one of these locally. The unit is roughly 24 centimeters wide, 6.5 centimeters tall, and 22 centimeters deep. So now we're going to open the machine and have a look what's inside. There's a push button here, just push that down, and then this slides to the left. Now we grab the top panel and we just push it forward, it comes off just like that. And we can do the same thing with the rear panel, just push it forward and out it goes. The top is covered with a metal shield, there's a little latch here, just pull it up and off we go. Here we are at the back of the unit and this is where the RAM is, you just pop open this uh, shield here. We've got a 4 gigabyte module already installed, there's a second slot here and according to my research the maximum you can upgrade this machine to is 16 gigabytes of memory. And here we can see the insides of the machine. Included was one of these network cards. This is a PCI Express, seems to be fiber optic, so I've already removed that. On the right side we've got the cooling solution, which keeps track of the temperatures for the processor, the video card and the chipset. It runs extremely quiet, so I was positively impressed. Down here was a 16 gigabyte flash memory installed. 16 gigabytes is not cutting it for Windows XP, so I did remove that. Upgrading storage is really easy, we've got a SATA connector here and a drive bay for a 2.5 inch hard drive. I went with a 120 gigabyte SSD. There's also a mini PCI Express connector here that lets you install a wireless card and all the way here in the back is a 44 pin IDE connector. Okay guys, so we had a quick look on the outside and inside of this machine. I'm going to take this to the computer lab and hook it up to the capture computer. I ran into one little issue, there was a password on the machine, but look, that's not going to stop us. It's actually really easy to remove. Uh, you just unplug the power source, remove this jumper here, and then press the CMOS clear button there, and the BIOS password was gone. As always, if it has a BIOS, we're going to flash it. I couldn't find a BIOS for DOS, so I just downloaded the BIOS update for Windows from the HP website, and that worked just fine. The BIOS has a lot of options. It reminds me a lot of the HP Elite 8200 small form factor machines. To access the BIOS, just hammer the escape key when you turn on the machine. This will also uh, let you access a boot menu and some diagnostics. Next we're going to install Windows XP. I'm booting off a USB flash drive created with easy to boot. I've done a video project on that, check out the card at the top of the screen. I've partitioned and formatted the SSD on my main Windows 10 desktop in order for the partitions to be aligned. Once we have Windows XP installed, it's time to install some drivers. Officially this machine is not supported by Windows XP, but I just went to the ASRock website. They've got an A55 Pro 5 motherboard with the same components and there you can just download the chipset and graphics drivers. To install the rest of the drivers, I just used the Snappy Drivers project. It found the drivers for Ethernet, Sound, SMBus and also the HDMI audio and other components. Because the machine has integrated Radeon graphics, we get really nice drivers with all the options like scaling, anisotropic filtering, anti-aliasing, as well as control for VSync. 
Let's dive straight into some benchmarks. We've got 3 Mark first, checking out the integrated Radeon HD 6320. Later we will upgrade the video card and install it into the PCI Express slot and we will see how much of a difference we're gonna get. Moving on to Quake 3, now that's an older game with the high quality preset and we're getting extremely good FPS. Next up we've got Far Cry, now this game seems to be a little bit more demanding. We're getting around 30 FPS with the very high quality preset. This is Doom 3, we're starting off with 51 FPS, 640 by 480 and then as we crank up the resolution the performance goes down a little bit but this game is still quite playable. And here we have Fear with maximum details, I did turn off anti-aliasing and soft shadows and we're getting around 40 to 30 FPS at most resolutions. Now the integrated Radeon graphics isn't bad, but because the machine has a dedicated PCI Express slot, so of course we're going to upgrade the video card. A while ago I did a roundup of low profile, low power video cards and this card stood out to me. This is the GT730 with GDDR5. I had to remove the VGA connector here, otherwise the card wouldn't go into the machine. Although the PCI Express connector is physically 16x, it's only wired for 4x, but as we see in the benchmarks, this is actually not an issue. And we're back with some benchmarks, once again 3D Mark, and we can see now the orange results with the dedicated GD730, and we're getting a nice upgrade. In 2001 SE and in 2005, we're getting quite a significant boost, but look at 2003, that benchmark is just the right combination of processor and GPU requirements for this machine to really shine. In Quake 3 we can see that the Radeon was actually faster at the lower resolutions. The GeForce is very consistent, around 160 FPS and it doesn't lose any performance as we crank up the resolution. Here we have Far Cry and we can see around 40 FPS with the GeForce. So that tells me that the processor is holding this game back a little bit. Doom 3 is a game that has always been running well with a GeForce and we're getting basically 60 FPS across all the resolutions. And in Fear we can also see a nice boost, around 50 FPS across all the resolutions and unlike the Radeon, even at the high resolution we don't get a drop in FPS. Now we're going to have a look at some games, I will put the title and other information down below on the video. Mm, yes, 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 yes. Ah, there you are. Dr. Z, is everything all right down there? It's all I have left. Are you the only one who's on that train? All right, I'm moving. Jeez. Welcome. Welcome to City 17. You have chosen or been chosen Dr. to be one of our finest I was hoping I'd seen the last of him in City 14. 
So let's summarize this video. It's a nice compact and lightweight unit. It doesn't consume much power and it's extremely quiet. It comes with sufficient RAM for Windows XP gaming, but this storage definitely needs to be upgraded. If you want to use Windows 10, and I have tried that, you can upgrade the RAM even further up to 16 gigabytes. And the PCI Express expansion slot opens the door to all sorts of projects like gaming or streaming videos, but I've also seen people turn this into a firewall or router. Because the T610 Plus is from HP, it's extremely well documented. You can download the latest BIOS and you will find all sorts of other uh, projects out there that people have been using this machine for. The drivers took a little bit uh, of an online search to find, but once you have them, it's really not an issue. All the devices are fully supported. I do wish that the processor was a little bit stronger with the GT730 we saw it being held back a little bit. That just means that the latest and greatest Windows XP games might not run that well. So just stick with some of the older games and there will be a ton of games that will run just fine on this machine. Even the integrated graphics is fairly decent. We're getting all the Radeon driver options, so that's nice to see, including GPU aspect ratio scaling to get that proper 4x3 retro look. And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Let me know what you think of this machine. Can you see this being used for Windows XP retro gaming or would you be using it for another project? As always, guys, if you found this video interesting, leave a comment down below about future projects. What else could we do? Uh, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, share it with your friends and click on that notification bell. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.